The Philippines is quite an amazing and unique place. Locals have been learning stick fighting almost since their childhood, and often a teenager is able to handle a predator or a person who poses a threat. In addition, Philippines are by nature very freedom-loving people, so historically they have never tolerated any authority that came from outside. Therefore, it is not surprising that when the Japanese captured the Philippine Islands, the local population stood up to fight against the occupying troops. According to the most conservative estimates, at least 260,000 partisans and resistant fighters took part in the struggle against the invaders. Moreover, the intensity of the battles was quite serious, and the clashes between the Japanese and the partisans were bloody and tangible for the Japanese troops. Suffice it to say that before the Philippines was liberated by American troops, the partisans cleared many settlements from the invaders on their own. Of course, any resistance has its famous heroes. But there was a person in the ranks of the Filipino partisans, who was even included by many media in the list of the most important women in the world. And indeed it was well deserved. The only official known female partisan, Nieves Fernandez, has become both a symbol of Filipino resistance and a real nightmare for the Japanese. Before the war, the locals considered this woman to be prim and sometimes arrogant. 35-year-old Fernandez lived a fairly prosperous life. She had a profitable business and also worked as a teacher at the school. The students respected her, calling her Miss Fernandez. It seemed that the life of a businesswoman and a teacher would be happy and cloudless. But after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the army of the country of the rising sun soon invaded the Philippine Islands. Fernandez's hometown Tacloban was occupied on May 25, 1942. From that moment on, the life of the local population turned into a real nightmare. The invaders began to commit outright robberies, taking away valuables and food from local residents. Many were forcibly sent to work on the construction of fortifications and agricultural work, providing food convoys and so on. Fernandez herself after the war recalled how the local businessmen were forced by the Japanese to give up their business. They had their own methods of persuasion. For example, the business owner was alternately placed in a scalding hot tub then in a bathtub filled with ice water. The torture could go on for several days without food and drinking water, except for the water in the bathroom, but with soap, which was specially added to it. No wonder that such torture sooner or later ended when the unfortunate owner was ready for anything to save himself from torment. The Japanese also took full control of the education system in the city. In order for the school to work, it was necessary to obtain approval almost from the emperor himself. Moreover, not only the work of the school was coordinated, but also curricula along with studying materials. However, on the one hand, no one could meet such conditions, and on the other, Japan had no time to bother with all this coordination. Therefore, Fernandez soon learned that the school where she worked would be closed. Perhaps this was the very last straw that turned a kind, albeit a little strict, teacher into one of the most terrible and ruthless killers, who very soon began to terrify Japanese soldiers and officers. Today it is hard to believe and generally hard to imagine that a woman decided to become a lone avenger. Initially, Nieves Fernandez, dressed in all black, went into the jungle, where she started to ambush Japanese soldiers and officers. As a weapon, she used the traditional Filipino tool for cutting reeds, thickets, and cultivating the land, the bolo. Outwardly similar to machete, the bolo has generally become the most widespread weapon among the Filipino resistance fighters. The fact that Nieves Fernandez turned this tool into a weapon of fairly effective and safe destruction is entirely her merit. The woman killed the Japanese so that the victim could not call for help. Her killing technique was to stab behind the airlock. The carotid artery and the jugular artery pass through this place, which provides blood flow to the brain and its outflow. A quick blow almost instantly led to a loss of consciousness. And once the blade of the bolo was in the right place, it had to be pressed so that it went in about 5 centimeters and then pushed and turned 90 degrees. Even if the victim did not lose consciousness and tried to scream, he failed to do so because such a blow blocked even the possibility of air intake. 
Fernandez's procedure for killing Japanese was honed to perfection, and soon enough rumors about the quiet killer were spreading in the Japanese troops, or sometimes she was called the silent killer. Appearing as if from nowhere, this ghost killer killed a victim without a sound, and also disappeared unnoticed. Later, Fernandez made a homemade shotgun from a pipe scraps, from which she methodically, but not so quietly, shot Japanese soldiers and officers. The total number of Japanese personally killed by Nieves Fernandez is unknown. However, the fact that the Japanese military command has announced a reward of 10,000 pesos for the head of a female killer speaks volumes. Some believe that on the island of Leyte, where Fernandez lived and fought the invaders, mass resistance was born precisely because of the glory of the ruthless silent killer. Soon the male population of the southern part of the Tecloban region recognized Fernandez as their leader and commander. This is how a partisan detachment of 110 people was formed, commanded not by Miss, but by Captain Nieves Fernandez, who had already gained some experience of, if we may say so, military operations. Fernandez began to train her fighters in the handling of bolo as a murder weapon, as well as in the making of homemade pipe guns, which were called letongs or paltiki, and also some kind of grenades made from pipe scrapes. Homemade grenades consisted of gunpowder and small metal objects, which were put into a tube, which then was carefully sealed. The partisan detachment under the command of Captain Fernandez was called the Varai Partisans. The unit was so effective that even the Japanese soon respectfully, which is already incredible, called Fernandez the excellent girl. The fighters under the command of Nieves Fernandez carried out daring and unexpected operations for the enemy to destroy convoys with food and ammunition, and raided the places of deployment of Japanese troops. One of the detachment's most notorious and successful operations was the liberation of the Filipina camp, which was intended to be sent either to brothels for Japanese soldiers and officers, or simply to serve as sex toys for the invaders. Also, the Fernandez fighters released, according to various sources, from several dozen of several hundred prisoners of war. In several Filipino villages, the Varai guerrillas completely defeated and destroyed the Japanese garrisons. In total, the Nieves Fernandez detachment accounted for at least 200 only killed soldiers and officers. The number of wounded is unknown. Captain Fernandez herself always fought alongside her subordinates, not dodging bullets. During one of the military operations, a woman was wounded in the forearm. However, this did not affect the efficiency of the partisans. When the operation to liberate the Philippines began, the Fernandez detachment provided all possible assistance to the American troops, recapturing several settlements on the island of Leyte on their own. By the way, the Americans nicknamed the Varai detachment a gang of gas pipes. However, even they could not have imagined that the most effective unit on the island was commanded by a woman. History has preserved the famous photo in which Nieves Fernandez shows an American soldier how to properly kill a Japanese with a bolo. Perhaps this is just a coincidence, but the island of Leyte was the first among the Philippine islands which was liberated from the Japanese invaders. Nieves Fernandez herself is officially considered the first and the only female partisan who fought in the Philippines during the Second World War, and many even compare her contribution to the victory over the enemy with the operation to liberate the island by American troops. In fact, the woman has become not only a symbol of resistance, but also proof that even unarmed resistance fighters can inflict serious damage on the enemy. Moreover, it plunged them into such fear that a reward was announced for the head of the Silent Avenger. And when this did not help, the enemy had to retreat in front of a merciless stranger, who, like a shadow, appeared out of nowhere, destroyed a victim with one blow, and silently disappeared into nowhere.